now let's start with the session yesterday we talked about containers okay containers are important to run any application to run any applications either java dot net or php containers are nothing but servers or runtime environments in other words more technically you can call it as runtime environment servers are runtime environments you know right traditionally the servers are for java based application the most famous server is tomcat there we used to run all web applications and that too in java this is for purely servlets servlets run on tomcat in java ejb technology also we have that will run on ejb container okay so like weblogic jboss all application servers are having ejb capabilities this is only web server other name for it is web server ejb components if you want to run you can run it on weblogic jboss webspare these all are application servers the difference between web server and application server is web server coming up with servlet combination only servlet whereas application server whereas application servers comes with servlet container and ejb container application servers will handle both okay so when you choose frameworks right what are all combinations we can use for web development or any java based application development for example i am developing java based application and this is my pure web application i am developing pure web application to advertise my products i want to advertise my products i have a lot of products for sale i just want to advertise them via web application so here i can implement this application with servlets pure servlets advanced java api we call j2e and you can use struts framework which is discontinued struts 1x which is discontinued 5 6 years back itself still you can use this library if you want no more support from apache apache actually designed it and given apache struts or jsf This is pure core API and these all are frameworks which are implemented on top of servlets. Okay, pure core API, core servlets are you can use or else frameworks you can use. When I say framework, frameworks will simplify coding. You know, productivity is very faster in frameworks. You need not to have best coding techniques they implement the techniques and they provide it to you all the best practices they must implemented and given to you just you need to follow what they said okay so frameworks like struts jsf 
all are implemented on top of surlets only so still you can run them run them on tomcat only you can use them to implement your web applications only so end of the day you can implement web applications using these frameworks or else you can use spring mvc also spring mvc framework also similar to your struts and jsm and if you have any distributed applications distributed applications like banking so in case of distributed applications simple advertisement kind of applications or when you want to showcase your products like amazon e-commerce right maybe for front end one single application is sufficient maybe that is your web application in the background there would be many applications they will exchange information between them right so when you want multiple applications one single application is not sufficient for my entire system i want to implement so many applications they want to talk each other those are distributed applications in banking you know you will be having multiple systems together integrated for your banking services for customer banking one service for loan banking another service and you have the banking mobile apps or you have customer login applications those are again different right background many applications will run in background you know banking or for any enterprise level applications like e-commerce applications they all integrated together to provide you services not only one application multiple applications together will work so in such use cases we use ejbs to build distributed applications or in advanced technologies we have a kind of web services using ujbs you can implement them or you can use web services also there we have multiple styles like rpc so rest combinations using web services also you can integrate multiple applications together so if you are using web services it's okay you can use simple for rest right you can use simple web server which is tomcat is sufficient but ejbs you need application server so when application is distributed with ejb combination you should go with container called application server either it's a web logic jbos or web spare anything you can use and nowadays nobody using ejbs in case if you want to put communication between two services people are going with web services that too web services become simple with the rest using spring boot easily you can manage them so based or rest based and this is very old style nobody using it okay so when it comes to especially right till spring mvc okay you have uh, server dependency as soon as you migrate your application to spring boot or still spring framework if you use still spring framework here to run spring applications right you need ioc container support these are self containers not a special software self containers this framework itself came up with containers 
usually before spring framework people used to build frameworks with container dependency with container dependencies they used to build frameworks whereas spring came up with idea why should we depend on somebody's containers what if i have my own container all my classes can be managed there like spring came up with its own server it came into the market that's why it became more popular even spring boot also yeah this is just advanced to your spring framework they have their own containers spring framework is having only ioc container whereas spring boot is having ioc container plus built in embedded tomcat embedded tomcat also they brought you need not to download special tomcat container to run your spring boot applications they come up with embedded tomcat so you need not to depend on any special container while using pure spring framework with uh, this self container combination you need to use tomcat also here if it is a web application for stand alone it's okay ioc is must enough in case if you build web application additional tomcat you need to download and you should use it in your server so containers are that important for any application without containers we can't run them to run the code we need runtime environment there we need the servers when you choose servlets you need a tomcat when you choose servlets based frameworks still tomcat is required when you go with ejbs you need application servers when you choose spring you have ioc container it's a self container all these are not self containers servlets released by someone tomcat kind of web servers released by someone ejb framework is from sun and the servers are from different vendors but whereas spring came up with its own self containers framework with the containers framework with containers they brought together to make your application development simple and no dependency on others you need not to depend on any other special servers and they went to advanced level in spring boot they made everything embedded ioc container and tomcat also they give so your job is simple here just write code and run it on java directly okay so as i am talking about containers what these containers need to provide servers like servlet container like tomcat servlet container what features they should provide what is the main feature this container should have or ejb container or your ioc container what they should have first if i talk about servlet container tomcat right this tomcat container as soon as you implement your application and deploy it okay so implement and deploy as soon as you deploy it into tomcat your code when you deploy it into tomcat what it will do it will create first step it will read web.xml if it is xml based configuration tomcat will read web.xml then second step create servlets object it will read your web.xml and it will create servlet object which are configured in web.xml 
in web.xml if i configure servlet 1 servlet 2 for all the servlets right it will create objects it will create servlets object servlet 1 servlet 2 classes objects it will create and it can call after creation of servlets objects right it can execute life cycle methods also there is life cycle methods concepts there are some life cycle methods concepts we have it can execute life cycle methods as soon as you start your application right when you deploy it it will call life cycle method in it so during deployment if there is there are any initialization techniques if you want to create some connection pool objects, you can create them from this lifecycle unit method. First, it will read a web.xml file, then create servlet objects, then it can execute lifecycle methods like init method. Then your application is ready. By this time, your application is ready. So now, users will hit your application user send request via http protocol to your tomcat so tomcat internally it will map request to your servlet s1 and s2 and it will handle your request operations hereafter When you decide to destroy, I mean shut down your application. So you developed and deployed today. And application is used for next one year. After one year, you decided to shut down your application due to maintenance. So when you call shutdown, shutdown Tomcat, what it will do? it will destroy all servlets all servlets objects will be destroyed which means whatever objects in the first it will create right these all objects are singleton one object per application it will create only one object per application when you deploy it only one object per application Just in that case. Yeah. Okay. So one object per application, it will create servlet objects. If you implement 10 servlet classes, only 10 objects until you shut down. Servlet container, after implementation of your code, when you deploy it, first thing it will read your web.xml file. From there, it will fetch your servlets and it will create servlet objects, which are S1 and S2, which you implemented. Only one object it will create. If you have two servlets for your application, only two objects that's it for next one year two objects only will they don't become very old let them become old still two objects only okay it doesn't required new object for every user request till next one year tomcat will use same servlets same objects it won't create extra object so it will consume very less memory even if you have thousand servlets thousand objects only for next one year one lakh users request count came to me still two objects only because servlet objects are singleton tomcat will create only once not many one object only strictly one object so when you call shutdown, then it will destroy 
your servlet. It will call h1 and h2, it will destroy. Before destroying your servlet, it will execute life cycle destroy methods. What you can do here, whatever initializations you have done as part of init method, right? Let's say connection pool object I created. Only one time that logic will execute during deployment. Connection pool object I created. So the same connection pool object will be destroyed via destroy method. Tomcat container created servlet objects. Servlet objects will be destroyed by Tomcat. What about your objects which you initialized? You need to destroy them. So you initialized your objects from init method and that will be destroyed from destroy method of servlet. So this is how the entire servlet lifecycle goes on. Objects will be created lifecycle methods will be executed and for next one year your servlet object will be used as soon as you shut down your servlet objects will be destroyed by calling destroy methods of your servlets that's it there you are done this is how servlet containers will work for your servlets what about ejb containers same story Here it will deal with EJB session beans and EJB entity beans. EJB container will deal with EJB session beans and entity beans. Again, they have similar lifecycle methods. Similar lifecycle methods. Only one object will be created. I don't want to go in depth into EJB container, but just imagine with your servlets. And they are not for front end access. HTTP protocol they can't access. After this write, you have servlet implementation. After servlets, they may can call EJB session beans. Servlets are for controller only. As per MVC, here your servlets will help until controller part. Then EJB session beans for business layer and this entity beans for DAO layer. So end to end you can cover using servlets and EJB's combination. So EJB containers will do the same. Create EJB objects. Second thing they will register EJB objects in directory service they will call lifecycle methods of EJB and they are ready for this flow they are ready for this flow this flow will be executed for next one year, let's say you deployed your application and no changes till next one year. This flow goes on. As soon as you undeploy your application, as soon as you shut down, it will call, it will destroy all EJBs and it will execute lifecycle destroy methods. So there also you have lifecycle methods in EJBs, it will execute them. And if you observe for servlets and EJBs, one thing extra it is doing, it is registering EJB objects in directory services. Apart from lifecycles and creation of objects. EJBs are meant for distributed applications. Means, one EJB application can talk with another EJB application. So to make that possible, it will register your EJB objects into directory services. Directory service is like a internet service. I purchased a laptop, but I can't connect with another machine, which is there in US, UK or somewhere in Delhi. 
I can't connect from Hyderabad. But if I have internet, I can connect with them. Maybe via by setting port access or IP access, I can connect with that computer. Remote access I can get. But I need internet. Similarly, EJBs can be accessed from anywhere, but you need to register them into directory services so that that objects are accessible from some other application as well. EJBs can talk together. One application EJB can talk with another application EJBs. That's how they implemented them. With Sarlets, that is not possible. One Sarlet I implemented in one application. Can I talk with another application Sarlet? No, not possible. This is one extra feature you can see. So this is how Sarlet container, EJB containers works. Then what about your IOC container? Do I have Sarlet classes here or do I have EJB classes here? Do I need to write them? For Tomcat, you said implement Sarlet classes. For EJBs, you said implement EJB session means and entity means. Then what about Spring IOC container? I'm learning here Spring. Do I need to implement any sublets or do I need to implement any EJB session beans, entity beans kind of stuff? For my end to end flow, for this end to end flow, do I need to do so? Usually, not required. Of course, we will use Tomcat, but forget about it. To implement your controllers, to implement your controllers, you may need Tomcat. Tomcat will create one servlet object, dispatcher servlet, that is inbuilt class. Hereafter, for your controller implementation, right? This one is not for your controller implementation. To read data from user, right? Which are data coming from user to read it, you need to write a controller class. You need to write one controller class, your own controller class, spring based controller class. Okay, so you will be writing one spring controller here. And for handling business and DO logic, you, you need not any EJB API here. Simple spring you can use here. And for DO, you need not use any EJB entity means. You can use simple Hibernate here, or you have option spring with Hibernate here, or spring with JDBC here. Multiple options we have. So here, who will maintain all these objects for controller, business, DAO? Now, if I choose Spring, you are saying implement Spring controller, Spring business classes, and Spring based DAO. So, technically, are they special classes like servlets and EJBs? Servlets and EJBs are really special classes. You need to extend their APIs and implement them. But here during coding style right to implement your controller or business or DAOs you need not to follow any coding styles just you can use simple java classes simple java class can behave like a controller here for business simple java class For DAO, simple Java class. That's where I named it Pozo. Pozo classes. Simple Pozo classes are sufficient for your controller, business, and DAO implementations. But who will manage them? Earlier, I used to have containers. Earlier, I used to have containers for servlets and EJBs. Now, who runs my classes? I implemented simple classes only here, but who will manage them? Why they should manage? Because in real time applications, you never create objects. Containers only will create. Either it is EJB or servlets. Then what about the Spring framework? Will it going to create my classes objects, whichever I write here? Controller objects, business objects, DO objects. 
yes so finally your object will be created by ioc containers ioc container will create objects of your controllers service or in, the, in other words business DAOs IOC container will create objects for you for all these classes do I need to follow any standard techniques means nothing right in whatever way you want but follow good poops principles okay that's it you need to write simple java classes for your controller and business and you whenever you want special capabilities you can add to them along with simple pose or right you can add some special capabilities also to them okay special crown you can add to them some special advantages you can provide to them using different spring modules but end of the day who is gonna create objects for all these classes controller business DOs your IOC container how to code it imagine you don't know anything but how to code it I want to implement one controller class just implement class like this public class student controller that's it you have controller class and what about business class student business class what about DAO student DAO class forget about methods I have three classes three simple classes I have written controller business DAO as of now I don't have any methods okay simple classes I have then how IOC container can able to create objects for them first focus on your code implement your classes controller business DO is done now next step these are the steps okay step one while using spring write your write poses okay I implemented them what next step two configure them in spring xml file in ejbs we use ejb xml file for tomcat we use web.xml file similarly they choose to the xml concept to for configurations so step one write your poso classes for your application step two configure your posos into this xml how to write that xml simple there is a main root tag name called beans under these beans you can configure all these poses using a tag name called bean bean class controller class bean class student business class any special tag nothing same bean tag for controller service and a DA that's it two steps one is write your posters second step configure them into XML file and next step you need to load it into IOC step 3 in real-time application step 3 you need not to load it into IOC container Step 3 is avoided in actual real time applications while you are implementing while you are implementing web application right especially MVC Spring MVC is having this logic you need not to write it this third step you need not to write but as we are not doing MVC complete example of itself I will do it for you okay I'll do it for you step 3 so here you need to load it into IOC container I don't want to do any web application right away with the standalone only I want to test it for standalone applications you know what you need to use public class some class with the main method 
public static void main string arguments here I can here I can have IOC load IOC concept I can have here again we have two types of IOC containers that we learn for interview sake nothing else so I'll be using as part of this IOC right two IOC containers we have one is core container we call and one is j2e container we call so for core container we will use these lines resource r equal to new class path resource just to read your xml file so wherever you have your xml file you need to read it and you need to load it into bean factory bean factory this is your ioc object your container new xml bean factory so here you need to pass this resource object this is like a file object so first it will identify your file and it will load your file here so this is core container logic we have two containers two flavors core j2e and one more we have web also so that web is part of your mvc you need not use it it is part of mvc you need not to code it usually internally it have spring mvc is having web container logic you need not to do that only during standalone practice only we use this core container and j2e container so j2e container name is application context new class path xml application context here you can load your spring xml yeah, this is how you need to do step 3 step 3 load it into ioc container so what containers need to do here container job is what importantly containers need to create objects containers need to create objects surlet container created surlet objects ejb container created ejb objects then what about my spring classes who create objects for them i have controller business and da implemented with spring only but these classes objects will be created by your ioc container only what is ioc container name if it is a core container you may call it bean factory if it is a j2e container you can call it as application context if it is a web container you can call it as web application context but this code you need not to write not required to write already implemented in dispatcher surlet there is a class name called dispatcher surlet there they implemented it just you need to use this class that's it for your application but before going to mvc applications right till there we will use this j2e container to learn all other features without this container we can't create these objects without creating these objects you can't use these classes so you have implemented classes you need to configure them in xml file and you need to load them into ioc container why you need this container containers are runtime environments they only will manage your objects they only will create your objects you never use a new keyword to create these objects and we'll talk with them containers will do that job for you without container if you try to establish communication you need to use new keyword okay so we will extend this session tomorrow and we'll continue further okay go more in depth into these containers tomorrow okay so how they will create objects and what is the really need of asking object to create by ioc can't i create i know core java i can use new keyword still you know you are good in core java but don't use new keyword to create your objects 
ask a IOC to create objects. I'll show you the differences. If you create what you will do, if IOC create what it can achieve. Okay, that we will see in tomorrow's session. Okay. Perfect.